Hi everyone, my name is Ira Fay, and this is a game that I'm playing against Vase. We have decided that the Free People player will get two action tokens, and I am playing the Free Peoples, and they're playing Shadow, obviously. And they allocated one eye and rolled one more. And this is a game that we played a couple weeks ago, and it's actually been long enough that I don't actually remember exactly the outcome of this game. So one of the purposes of these videos is for me to try and analyze them and, and see if opportunities for possible improvement. So this is an interesting start to the game. My opponent has two musters. They're probably going to get Isengard to war, and I can think that I have a chance to get the elves to war right away. I have two, I have two musters, and I also have the token. So if you have an early start like this, would you go for the elves right away? Obviously, I'm going to move the fellowship once, but then I have three more dice. My plan, I think, is to play Power of Tom Bombadil. It's a perfectly fine card to get early game and see what happens. So let's let's go right ahead. All right, so I pass. My opponent musters Isengard to war, and I play Power of Tom Bombadil. I think it's fine to progress the north towards war. I'm always happy to draw deeper into the strategy deck, particularly when I have musters and armies at the beginning. I'll likely have a card that I can play. All right, Emerhal of Dol Amroth, I'm always happy to see because Dol Amroth is often a target, so it's a good way of reinforcing it. My opponent draws a strategy card, and I go ahead and move the Fellowship, which is missed. That makes sense. And then my opponent forms up armies and Gorgroth, and I go ahead and muster the Elves towards war. I think Elves are often a target and it's nice to be able to give some defense to the north another possibility is to just muster the north one towards war the issue is i don't have a way of activating them particularly easily so without that i decided it, it made more sense to progress with the elves and i don't need to play emerald of dol amroth right now because i can wait until next turn probably draw palantir probably roll a palantir and play it that way all right, my opponent gets armies formed up in Mordor. This makes me think they're coming towards Gondor, which is okay with me since I managed to draw a Gond Gondor muster card. And I go ahead and muster once in Gondor, anticipating an attack. If I see armies formed like this, it feels like a likely attack against Gondor. All right, and then, of course, they get Saruman turn one, so that's good. Didn't make a lot of progress with the Fellowship, but... I'm okay with the with the musters. All right, Palantir of Orthanc is obviously a great card to get early, and especially when there's some tension against the free peoples who who want to get Gandalf. So I'm thinking, oh, you know, I'll try and ro roll a couple of character dice and a Will of the West and get Gandalf turn two. That wouldn't be so bad. Cirdan Ships is always a good one, particularly happy with the Elven Muster that I did, so I think it's likely that Dol Amroth is going to be a well-defended target this game. All right, the opponent allocates one eye and then rolls one more and only gets a single muster. So this is a situation where had I gone full bore on the Elves, I could have then roll made use of these two musters and really defended the elves well but my opponent hasn't really focused on a particular area to attack the elves yet so i'm sort of waiting and seeing Let, let's see where they commit to attacking first all right obviously this is not a great roll only a single movement again i've rolled on eight dice only two movement that's relatively unlikely and again no will of the west here so even if i get caught i'm not going to be able to get um not going to be able to get get off the white back now before moving so my opponent plays the palantir and i think that's a great way to start it off it puts some pressure on me maybe i'm gonna have to use a ring right away and i think well okay is it worth playing a paying a ring right now my chances of rolling will the west next round are about 50 percent and i would rather not give a ring for just a single card draw. So I think what I end up doing is playing Imrahel of Dol Amroth now so that I cycle the card with Gandalf and then see what happens. But I don't know, maybe it makes more sense if I'm going to spend a ring anyway, because next next round, if I roll Will of the West, then I'd, I'd like to kill off Gandalf and get an extra die. But 
I think at the moment, particularly I also have ends, so a, a lot of reasons why I'd, I'd like to get Gandalf sooner rather than later. So maybe if I'm going to end up using a ring to get rid of the Palantir anyway, maybe it makes sense to, to do it now, but I always prefer not to give shadow rings. So I would love to know your thoughts. Would you, would you spend a ring to get rid of the Palantir now, or would you wait until next turn hoping to roll a Will of the West, possibly even foregoing Gandalf? All right, so I pass, and then, of course, they go ahead and play their card. Stormcrow backs the elves up. So, you know, that's not great. I wanted to get them to war. I had cared in ships. And what else was I going to do with these musters? So, you know, that's that's certainly a little disappointing. Um, all right, but it happens. I get rid of the leader in Greyhavens, and they get to redraw monsters roused. All right, I move the fellowship once, and they get hit. And, you know, so far Shadow had, you know, four dice on a six, the two last round, two this round. So I think it's fair they get they get the fellowship once. And, you know, three is perfect for Gandalf. So maybe that's a mistake there. Maybe I should have played Immerhill of Dol Amroth first. I'm not sure why I didn't, honestly. I think that's just a mistake. You know, the chances of getting hit with a three where you'd lose Gandalf are very low. But... You know, I would have lost Gandalf to a two also. So I think that was just a mistake. Better to cycle the card when I had the chance. All right, but Gandalf goes to a three. That obviously makes sense. And now maybe my calculations on the Palantir feel a little different. Um, I think my my thinking right now is, well, let's let's see what happens. So they get, they get um, Sauron to war. And I go ahead and start mustering the elves down because what the heck else am I going to do with these dice? So getting elves back to war, I think makes sense. They go ahead and move armies and I give them the ring now using a Palantir. Yeah, I don't know exactly what I was thinking here, but it does make sense, I think, to use a ring this round to get rid of the Palantir because then next round I'm going to be able to, if I hopefully roll my Will of the West, I'll be able to get Gandalf. So I'm not going to, it's unlikely to roll two Palantirs. I mean, two Wills of the West next round. And what else am I going to do with that Palantir? All right, so Gondor, here we come. That makes sense. And... I want to get elves ready to go to war. If Gondor gets attacked, they are one away, so I will be able to muster in Minas Tirith before the siege hits. So they go ahead and move armies. I'm not sure exactly why they're moving toward Lorien. I mean, I guess it makes sense. Um, you could get them before before they manage to muster up. But at this point, I go ahead and put the elves to war because my opponent won't be able to get the Witch King this round. They'll have to wait till next round. And quite honestly, they were going to put somebody to war next round anyway, almost certainly. So I'd rather be able to defend Lorien. So at this point, I'm hoping that I'm hoping that I have an extra couple musters. I've certainly rolled a lot of musters so far. If that does continue, I'm going to have good use for it. Now, this is sort of an argument like, why didn't I just do this round one? If I could have done this round one, then why not? I don't know. I guess now they've sort of committed a little bit toward Lorien, so that's why I did it now. But I was sort of on my way anyway because I had curtain ships. All right. And because I used the action token, I took the last action of the round, and therefore they weren't able to take the last action and get the Witch King. All right, so I'm certainly hoping to roll a will of the west ah they just drew balrog of moria so obviously that's great to go against lorian and i'm happy to see a rohan muster card that's that's fine i really just want to see a will of the west so they allocate two eyes and i always find that's you know yes that's great because i'm going to moria but also if i roll will of the west i'm not moving i'm using it to get gandalf so my expected number of movements next round are lower anyway i don't know that it's worth it to put two eyes in but We'll see what happens. All right, so they don't roll any more, and I managed to get out of the last. So that's good. Um, and I start with Gandalf right away. Why do I do that? 
I don't know. I guess I'm doing it anyway, and I want to have the option to play Ents. I don't know. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. My opponent gets a unit in North Dunland. I think that's going to prepare them really nicely to attack Lorien, and I'm a little sad that I'm not going to get a second elite in there, but we'll see where they attack. So they go ahead and merge up, and now they seem to be going around to Minas Tirith. Now, obviously, I would like to be able to get an extra elite into Minas Tirith. That was the whole reason that I mustered Gondor one away from war, but this is going to cost them a few extra moves, so plus they're still going to have to deal with Osgiliath, so maybe it's okay. Um, they form up outside of Lorien. Obviously, I'm going to muster while I have the chance into Lorien, and then they attack Lorien. So, you know, that was a lot of musters. I spent four, five muster actions on the elves to get a single regular, I mean a single elite into Lorien. Not great. Really not great. But they, the north is probably safer. You know, Woodland Realm didn't get attacked. So, I don't know. We'll see. And at this this rate, I'm going to be able to get an extra elite into Minas Tirith, or at least a regular from Osgiliath into Minas Tirith. So, all right. I go ahead and use another ring. No, that's not a ring. I don't know why I said that. That was, they already had that ring. Um, so I just moved the fellowship. That's a totally normal move. Um, not sure what I was thinking there. Okay, so a regular move, and they miss. And they go ahead and play the Balrog as a card. Yeah, you know, obviously this is great um, to be able to hunt the Fellowship. Um, I wonder about using it as the combat effect. Uh, I guess this is a big enough army you're going to be able to take out Lorien, and so you don't need it as the combat effect. So, okay, fair enough. Um... And then I go ahead and play Aomer because what else should I do? And they get the Witch King now with their ring. And, you know, I think that's a great, great use of Palantir of Orthanc to give you a ring early. Um, and just one of the reasons why, as the free people, you want to try not to give shadow rings. Um, obviously, with as many Palantirs as they rolled, it made sense to, to use it. Okay, so everybody's active now. I can get people to war as necessary and we'll see what happens so ring wraiths are abroad shadow is certainly drawing some some nice cards here i get king brand's men you know that's nice to have but it doesn't seem like the north is getting attacked um and i still have a pretty good sizable elven reinforcement pool so i can use kingship without too much worry um they allocate only one eye this time and I have a whole bunch of movement so Obviously, obviously that's quite good. I'm happy to see this. We'll see what see what comes of it. So I start by moving, and they miss, and they attack into Lorien. Now I, I think maybe I was considering playing King King Brand's men with this muster die, and you know it's it's always nice to have more units up there. Um, it would let me cycle a card, but I think I wanted this as an option to be able to muster into Minas Tirith or into, I don't know, I don't know that I really need to be mustering aggressively into Dol Amroth because I have Immerhill, but all right, so they play a card, I play Shield Wall, and I don't remember exactly how this battle goes. They get some hits, Desperate Battle, and more Desperate Battle, and they manage to take it out. So... You know, I definitely did some back. I, I don't know. That feels like a pretty pretty average result. Would have been nice if Lorian was able to hold up for more than one round, but I mean more than one action, but sometimes that's how it goes. All right, so many kings. It is nice to take out Lorian early because if things go poorly for the Fellowship, Lorian is obviously a nice place to rest, but that is not going to be an option for the Fellowship this game, though they're moving well enough. Um, obviously, the first two rounds were slow, but... They've managed to make it at least past Moria. Maybe they're going to get some extra tiles from the Balrog when they eventually get revealed, but um, that's not too bad. Okay, so here comes here comes the army to attack Minas Tirith, and I, you know, this is a tricky question. Do I want to 
I could, this round, if I move one more time, going up to five movement, then I could use a character die to play Gua here and get Air, get Strider all the way to Dole Amroth and then use a um, Will of the West to be able to get Strider in uh, Aragorn in Dole Amroth this round. So a turn four, Aragorn, particularly when it looks like <clears throat> Gondor is going to be at war, I have both Immerhill of Dol Amroth and Cairden's ship, so Aragorn's going to be able to live for quite some time if he makes it to Dol Amroth. I'm, I think that's my plan right here, and then I'm saving this muster to muster into Gondor. Um, I think that makes a lot of sense. The question is, do I want to let Minas Tirith be put under siege with only four units when I could, using this Will of the West, move, move a unit in? So would you use the Will of the West now to get Minas Tirith filled up, maybe move this army from Edoras into Westamnet? Um, or would you move one more time and see if you can get Aragorn this round with Gwahir plus the, plus the Will of the West before the Southrons and Easterlings are at war? So that, I think, is a pretty interesting question. I don't know the answer. Um, I drew a card why the heck did i draw a card there so i guess i'm deciding to go for to go for strider i guess that's what i'm thinking here and i draw a card because why i wanted to see if i could get the guard guardians of the citadel i guess i mean guards of the citadel it's like one in 20 chance one in 19 chance it doesn't make a lot of sense to me exactly <clears throat> why i'm stalling there I don't know. That's weird. I think I would probably save that card, save that token. All right, so they go ahead and attack Minas Tirith. Gondor's at war now. And then, oh, what the? Oh, right. Right. So <laughs> that's funny. I didn't even see it in the in the replay. So I'm going for a military. I have the possibility of going for a military victory here. Once they use their extra character die to make this attack, it looks like they don't have any, any, they only have one more attack. And I could move here, move, move the units from, from Rivendell into Trollshaws, then move the, use my other sword to move into Old Forest Road, then use the Will of the West to go to Holland and there's the forest. And then finally use a ring on the last action to capture both Moria and Old Goldar. So, um, I guess I'm going for a win right here because if they don't have the mustering card in Dol Guldur or mustering card in Moria, then they're going to need something that basically gets this, this army out of Lorien into Moria. So they did draw into Ringwraiths or Abroad, um, and I saw that they had played Pits of Mordor already. So if we just look at discarded cards, I know you can't see this, but they played Pits of Mordor already. So I know that they can't do that. I think that is that is why I drew the card there, and I was just going for an instant win this round. Now, it's kind of interesting. I could have just... I, there was only one eye in the pool. I could have moved another time. I could have moved, you know, maybe two more times and made a lot of progress with the fellowship and if not if not that i could have moved in and gotten aragorn this turn you know move once with the fellowship then then get aragorn so this does win instantly but would you have gone for it would you have seen it and would you have gone for it so clearly i was going for it i was even willing to use my token to to make it more convincing and um there we go. So I move there. Then they draw a strategy card. Obviously, it'd be useful to get the Shadows on Misty Mountain, something like that. And then I use my Will of the West to get some movement going. And then they go ahead and move their character, um, their characters out. Now, I think that makes sense. I, I mean, obviously, they have to be able to defend Moria. But 
yeah. All right. There's no, there's no question there. And then I do a crazy thing, which is that I use the ring right here, which is completely idiotic. And we have a discussion about it and we say, okay, we're going to take that back because I don't know what I was thinking. I think I, I was super tired or something crazy, but we were, we were willing to sort of take that back and play it in a not completely stupid way. So the not completely stupid way is to use the character die first, because that way, if they have a mustering or a ring wraith or a broad, they have to play it and I don't give them the ring. So um, we did that. And I think that's obviously um, better and certainly credit to credit to A's for being willing to allow that take back. I think you know, this was a friendly game. In a tournament game, obviously, I wouldn't have done it. Even in a league game, I don't think I would have, I, you know, I wouldn't have asked for that. But this was a friendly game. We were just playing for, for fun. Obviously, it was it was rated. We were playing on the ladder. But I said, okay, if I win, we're not going to count it as a win for me on the ladder. If you win, obviously, still will count for you as a win. But it just wouldn't have been. It, it was so such a stupid thing that, that we decided to take it back for a friendly game. So I think that's, I think that's nice. Um, okay, so... I have now spent a lot of time. My opponent does play ringers or broad. They're able to get these units into Moria, get these units ready in East Rune, and my victory uh, was stopped. So, you know, I don't know exactly what the chances were of them having either Black Captain Commands, Ring Wraiths or Abroad, Shadows on Misty Mountain, or Orcs Multiplying again. But if they didn't have those, it would have been a win. So maybe it's worth going for it. That's that's what I did. Okay. Um, so I play Kindred of Glorfindel here because, I don't know, I want to cycle into more cards, maybe get um, Guards of the Citadel. Again, I don't think that's probably the right play. I think why not, why not just muster up in Dol Amroth while I have the chance with that muster? All right. I get Book of Mazarbal. All right, could be useful maybe to get some um, dwarves to war. I can separate. I can separate companions pretty easily directly, directly there if I need to, and I have Guahir to be able to do that. So you know, I have five dice. I have eight cards. I don't know exactly what you would keep here, what you would get rid of. Um, last battle is a great, really a great combat effect. Book of Mazarbal is good, but am I super worried about the dwarves getting attacked? Presumably, I'm going to roll an army muster or Will of the West, and I'm going to move this unit into Erebor and this unit into Dol Guldur. So, all right. So we go ahead and roll. They allocate an eye, and I don't declare the fellowship because I'm still hoping to get Strider into Dol Amroth. And I get a great roll. This is just a really beautiful roll. And I start off by using a Will of the West because I'm worried about eventually the South Rons and Easterlings getting to war and then Day Without Dawn is threatening. So I'm going to go ahead and move now. I take Dol Golder and hmm. So I move these units out of Rivendell. I guess, yeah, so I'm really focused on, on getting, this is interesting, I'm really focused on getting the military victory at this point. And I don't know. I think it's nice to take Dol Golder. I lost some time with the Fellowship, but my military isn't in that bad of a position. I don't know that these three regulars are in any way taking Moria, particularly, I mean, the Balrog of Moria is still in play. Um, and my opponent has musters. So I just, I don't know that this is really a credible threat. And I think that's that's probably that's probably a mistake to move those guys out. I think maybe be better to get the guys from Edoras into Westamnet or the dwarf from Iron Hills into Erebor and to keep trying to make progress with with the fellowship. Maybe I'm thinking I'm gonna move once, hopefully not get caught. And then I'm going to separate with Gua here, and then I'm going to use this Will of the West to get Aragorn and Dol Amroth. So that, that could still be pretty good. All right, so my opponent musters. They're being very cautious. That's good. And then I move. Obviously, I don't want to get hit, but I do get hit, and that's not great. Because now my plan to get Strider this round is not going to work so well. Um, 
But I go ahead and declare the fellowship anyway. That's five movement to Parth Celebrant. I get revealed, and then the extra tile from the Balrog is a one. Okay, could be worse. The extra tile from the Stronghold is an I. So obviously that could have been a lot worse for the fellowship, though, you know, pulling two low tiles and getting revealed, I didn't really want that. I wanted to be able to get Strider this round. I mean, Aragorn this round. All right, so Lord of the Ring hits Gimli, bye-bye Gimli, and then they're going to go ahead and start drawing character cards now that the Fellowship is revealed. So I hide using Aragorn's ability, and if the Southrounds and Easterlings are not at war, it could be possible to use Gwahir to put Aragorn, uh, to put Strider in Pilargear and crown him in Pilargear at the end of this round, and then run away at the beginning of next round. So I'm considering that. All right, the um, Isengard gets mustered up. That makes sense. And then Ring is Mine. That's obviously a great card. And then I go ahead and play Gwahir here because now I know, okay, the Southrons and Easterlings cannot be um, put to war this round. And the only way that Strider is going to get attacked is if the, the Shadow has uses an attack with this character die and then also has black captain commands but i don't think there's any other combination that allows them to attack strider in polar gear this round so i'm getting my extra die there there goes strider and they attack holland from moria and i think yeah probably good to clear that out certainly is going to make rivendell um easier to take uh, but they don't move anyone in right here, and I go ahead and get Aragorn. So Hill Trolls show, show up uh, at Minas Tirith, and the game continues. So, I don't know, maybe these units out of Rivendell created some additional threat that, that, wasted, that made Shadow waste some actions up here, the muster and the attack, so, okay, may, maybe worth it. I mean, military victory is good, but also stalling shadow even if you're still going to eventually destroy the ring stalling shadow is good too all right so the shadow allocates one eye and rolls three more this time and i get a nice mix of dice so this is perfectly happy to see all of these i go ahead and muster the north toward war what am i thinking there i don't know that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I guess I'm worried about I'm worried about Erebor and Woodland Realm. I feel like why aren't I using this army muster to get this dude from Iron Hills into Erebor and these units from Edoras to Westamnet? And why aren't I mustering into either Woodland Realm or Pelargia or Dol Amroth? I mean, I have perfectly good uses of these musters so i'm not sure about that i don't know why that that feels like a mistake to me all right south rounds and easterlings are now at war and now that they are at war i need to run away with strike so i dead. run away with aragorn nor is he early and he then, arrives precisely when he means to. what's going on i run away with gandalf to Moria, do I? I really do. So why do I run away there? That takes away the threat of Ents. I guess I'm still really focused on... Yeah, so I guess I'm still really focused on trying to get a military victory. I'm, I'm trying to get the North to war. I'm going to muster up in the Northeast. I mean, the Northwest, Bree, North Downs, maybe even the Shire. Get these units from Rivendell and then meet up in Moria. Now that the Balrog card was used to hurt the Fellowship. I don't know. I think it makes a lot more sense just to be a little defensive here. It maybe feels a little bit like a waste to, to not move Gandalf when you could, but I think he's happy in Fangorn. All right. Well, Minas Tirith is attacked and... Um, play some good combat cards, but Shadow still makes progress. And um, 
Then I move once and get hit with a three. You know, that's not too bad. Uh, you know, obviously it'd be better to be missed, but not getting revealed is good. And we press on with the fellowship. So um, Shadow has even more reinforcements for Minas Tirith. So that's two different reinforcements cards played on Minas Tirith. Obviously good to get those. And it allows them to finish off. Oh, no, they're not. They're not finishing off. They really didn't. Okay, so that was, they played more. I forgot what happened there. So they, they played more, but they didn't even manage to take it. I go ahead, now that the North is at war, I muster in Dale. So I, I'm all over the place here. I was planning on, I was, I thought I was planning on going up here in, in Northwest, but then instead I'm mustering in Dale. I don't get it. I guess I ha I still have Imre Hill of Dol Amroth and I have Cairden Ships, so I'm just not worried about I'm not worried about Dol Dol Amroth and I'm trying to tempt Shadow, I guess, to to march in there, thinking that they could sneak it in. So instead, though, they go to Osgiliath from South Athelion. That makes a lot of sense, and they go ahead and take it. I run away to Dead Marshes, thinking that maybe I can sneak into Mornon. I don't know. All right, so I go ahead and use this character action to move into Westamnet because I'm, I guess I'm a little worried about corruption at this point because with four dice on a five, I'm definitely getting hit. So might as well wait around. Okay, next round. I get scouts, certainly happy to see scouts. And Let's see what I roll, what they roll. They allocate an eye and roll two more. That's a pretty bad roll for them. That's only a single attack on eight dice. That's very unlikely. But I only get a single movement. So, you know, that's pretty bad roll for both of us. Um, but I have plenty of useful cards that I can play. So that's all right. I start by not making up my mind and muster in Dale. Okay, so I think maybe um, I'm going for Mount Gundabad. That's what I'm going for here. Okay, could be. New powers rising obviously is not something I'm happy to see, but good for Shadow. Great use of their cards. And then I still move the Fellowship. So I'm, I'm really playing both sides. They get a hit and get a reveal. So not great. Um, I get a random companion, uh, which is... The Hobbit and put them in Fangorn. So that's good. And Shadow is now gathering up armies. And I go ahead and play Immerhill of Dol Amroth here because I want to save this m army muster in case um, some attack comes out of. Yeah, they can't. They can't actually attack out of there unless it's the Black Captain commands. But then they still aren't going to be able to um, get all the way into Helm's Deep. So. I'm not exactly sure why I play this here. I guess it's not it's not too bad. I want to play a card, draw a card, play a card. All right, so they muster into North Downs. I go ahead and draw a card. That's power too great. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I wanted to play Elven Rope, but I didn't have another card besides that that I wanted to play. I think I want to save Grimbjorn for scouts to make sure that I have as many leaders as possible in Helm's Deep. All right, so give it to us. It's interesting here because if Gandalf had stayed in Fangorn, this hobbit could have come to Westamnet. So, and if I had saved Book of Mazarbul, I could have used it to move some companions around here. Well, we'll see what happens. So I go ahead and start doing army movements, and I'm really going for the military victory, I guess. I'm, I didn't even move these units from Westamnet into Helm's Deep. I moved a regular from North, an elite from North Downs into Atten Moors. I guess I'm worried about this attack coming from either I'm going for a military victory or I'm worried about this attack coming from the units in North Downs. I mean, North Dunlin into uh north into rivendell all right so 
one of the things about a free people military victory attempt is that you have to have, um, you need to be far enough ahead, or at least shadow needs to be not close enough to 10 victory points that you can't like, because they win ties. If they get to 10 and you get to four, then shadow wins. All right. So foul thing from the deep gets a random companion, which is Legolas. And obviously it would have been slightly better to get a Hobbit at that point. And I go ahead and play Grimbjorn because I want to make this attack up against Mount Gundabat. So I guess I'm really going for a military victory here. Okay, that's one way to do it. And an elite in North Dunland. Okay. So I get Dead Men of Dunharrow. I'm very happy to see that with Aragorn up in Rohan. That means I can put him in some defense for a while, but then still escape. And Red Arrow is obviously good. I get rid of Elven Rope because I guess I'm giving up on the Fellowship. I'm just going for a military victory. We'll see how it goes. My opponent still allocates an eye and rolls two more. And then I get a whole bunch of character dice. So that is not really what I want to see at this point, right? Because I'm going for a military victory. I don't have a leader in the Troll Shaws to help out with the Elves. You know, so this these armies are stuck here, and I probably needed to do some more mustering before I was really on my way. So I go ahead and move this army into Carrick because because what? I'm going after Mount Gundabad. They only rolled one muster. And they did get four attacks. So this army from Moria can come to Dol Guldur. And I think if I had rolled different things, I might have had the army that had been in Old Forest Road head down to Dol Guldur to reinforce it a bit. But I think I just have to hope that this this army in Moria, which is the only one, well, Minas Tirith, one, two, three, four can't make it. So this army in Moria is going to have to come over and recapture Dol Guldur. Um, so maybe it's not maybe it's not so bad to have all of these attack dice if I can actually take out Mount, Mount Gundabad and they cannot recapture Dol Guldur. All right, so they move armies. That makes sense. Now, I kind of wish these armies were still in Rivendell. I had somebody in Rivendell. Um, I go ahead and muster an elite into... Carrick before I move along the, what's happening so this army is coming to South Anduin Vale to attack Dol Guldur yeah so this is a real chance do I want so I have I have heroic death so depending on what I think is happening here I could potentially bring in Aragorn defend Dol Guldur and then still take out Mount Gundabad in one attack, right? I can move Gandalf one, two, three, four to Eagle's Eyrie. And I can use um, Aragorn, bring him to Dol Guldur. It's certainly interesting. Um, I think I'm worried about something like Onslaught or something like Great Host which would guarantee kill this unit. And, you know, I wish if I had brought, if I had brought the elite instead of the regular, then great host wouldn't be guaranteed because I could then heroic death and, and soak up three hits on the normal combat. And then great host will only do one. And there are no elites in this army. So there's only going to be one round of combat. So, you know, um, what would you do here? Would you risk, would you bring Aragorn in? Um, possibly even bring in, bring in Gandalf instead to, to do that. Or would you bring Gandalf up to Eagles like Irie and Aragorn into Dol Guldur? Or do you just take the extra attack and hope that hope that Dol Guldur is going to hold against these four units? 
All right, so I go ahead and um, just move into Eagle's Eyrie. I'm gonna keep an extra attack. And then they attacked Old Golder. Um, and I go from Mount Gundabad. And then they play what is the absolute best use of Orcs Multiplying Gen I have ever seen. So both, both strongholds are under siege right now. And they are getting three regulars into Mount Gundabad. Perfect. Filling it up. And three extra regulars into Dol Golder to help with their attack. Um, so, you know, that's just awesome. So that was really, that was really beautiful. Just super elegant, really super fun play. And the timing was exactly right. That was exactly when they needed it. Um, that was, yeah, that was beautiful. We love that. All right. So I go ahead and attack under bad. I mean, yeah, I, it's certainly harder to take it, but I still have decent chances with, with this many elites. So I play no quarter and I get a bunch of hits and then I don't bother pressing because I have one extra attack. So they draw a character card, I guess, hoping to get Black Captain Commands, but they don't get it. And then I attack under bad and I go ahead and play Keratin Ships here because I want to try and win this battle and make sure I win it so that if they don't manage to take, take it out, then I can win. Now, as it turns out, they did not have, oh, they did have Onslaught. Okay. So they could have, they could have just done an Onslaught for four. Uh, if, if Strider, if Aragorn was in there, um, but instead they play Relentless Assault, saving the fighting Urkai for, um, a combat up here, which I think is a great play and, you know, they have really good chances. So I think that if, if Aragorn were in there, presumably they would have played Onslaught. I'm assuming that's what they would have done. If they had played Relentless Assault and I played Heroic Death, then I would have just won the game. But, well, who knows? Because Mount Gundabad, I would have only had, I would have had one fewer attack. So there are a lot of what ifs there. But they did manage to retake um, Dol Guldur. I think, I think what's interesting about all of this is I went for sort of a trick um, play for forgetting the military victory. I didn't build up a giant army and go for it. I just went for it with little teeny tiny armies when it seemed like the opportunity could present itself. And yes, that was true. It might've actually worked, but if it didn't work, did I really plan for those contingencies? I, I you know, I, like why not actually bring everybody um, to, to have a real chance at it? Or if you're not going to do that, then why not stop? Like I could have, I could have quit with all this military stuff and just gone to move the ring. So yeah. So this is, this is now sort of a pretty tough situation. Shadow has managed to repel half of the, you know, the, the military attack, which I obviously is good. And they're, they're making some good progress. The fellowship is, is certainly in trouble. All right, so they got Black Captain Commands here. They got Half Orcs and Goblin Men. So this is all. Um, they've drawn all three reinforcement cards, which is great. They've gotten quite a few, pretty pretty deep in the strategy deck too. So that makes sense. Um, they, let's see what happens. They allocate an eye. They don't. They roll one more eye. No muster here, and I get a pretty pretty flexible roll. Maybe. A little high on Palantirs and Musters, but not bad. So I'm certainly thinking like, well, what what could I still be doing here? Um, I need to be careful about abandoning Rivendell. It's a little bit of a, I pass here. It's a little bit of a tricky situation because I can't, if I'm, if I, I only got one army movement. So if I move this unit from Etmores into Trollshaws, then I can't actually follow up with the second move into Rivendell because there's no leader anymore. So that was actually really nice when they when they managed to take out the single um, elite and leader in Holland. Um, that's actually having a pretty significant impact over here. And I don't know again about this threat out of out of Trollshaws. Was it was it the right thing? 
All right, so they attack Trollshaws, and um, I don't know what I was thinking, but I don't. Uh, okay. Whoa, I played Daylight. Wow. All right, so I guess I'm still thinking about a military victory here. I'm still thinking, okay, I'm going to save Scouts to play in Rohan, get Rohan to war, and then and then bring these units up um, and attack into Dol Guldur. Um, so that's why. I, I remember that's what I was thinking here. I have Andril. Um, I have I have the Red Arrow. I can muster up in, in Rohan and just go up there. But I think I'm not aware of how bad things are in the land of the free people. So I mess, muster once into um, Rivendell, but it's not going to be enough against this army. So draw a strategy card. I'm, I think I'm just temporizing until I play the red arrow and then muster. And I ended up not being able to get Rohan to war anyway, because I used that muster in Rivendell. So maybe I should have just deemed Rivendell a lost cause at that point and saved that muster. I don't know that, that shadow has fighting Uruk High and half orcs and goblin men. But even so, I think I don't think these two units with no leader can do much against this force, especially if if Shadow brings in more Nazgul. Um, so that that might have been a mistake there. I, I'm really committed to the military victory path at this point, but then, yeah, I should have gotten Rohan to war here. So it might I might have still had a chance if I had gotten Rohan to war here. I might have still been okay. All right, so I draw a strategy card. They did draw Black Captain Commands. Um, they're taking out Minas Tirith, I think. No, they don't manage to take out Minas Tirith. Uh, yeah, they do. Okay, so Minas Tirith falls. That makes sense. I draw another card here. Why am I not playing the Red Arrow with that? They move Nazgul. I, oh, right. Oh my gosh. There were so many crazy things that happened in this game. Right, so once they move Nazgul, oh, I was trying to, I was trying to draw into um, through Dana Knight. And my plan at this point is to attack with a single regular and, and stry and Aragorn into um, into North Athelion with sudden strike, because now that now that the um, Nazgul have flown away and Black Captain Commands done, um, I believe that I can just attack right into this, and and then what are they going to do? I mean, if I if I hit, then I can go. Uh, then I can just walk into Minas Tir minus Morgul because they don't have any musters. And if I miss and they d retreat into minus Morgul, then I can go into Daggerlad and then walk into Mornon. So I think that's why I drew a card instead of playing instead of playing the Red Arrow. Um, unfortunately for me, um, right? So I move. Uh, what I'm thinking? Where should Gandalf go? Okay, Gandalf. Gandalf goes to um, Westmnet. Um, yeah, sure. Why not? I don't know. Um, they have half orcs and goblin men. So I, I, I didn't realize how many, how many chances I had of mil military victory here. So maybe it was fair that I kept, that I kept trying. Um, and so I guess I wanted to save, I wanted to save scouts in case of some random attack. Now, unfortunately, this is this is just too difficult i think of an attack to make at this point i only have a single hit point and my chances of taking out this force i mean i could sudden strike and then get really lucky but this has blocked me without without this card i really don't know how they could have defended against this honestly because there were no Nazgul around. They had already played Black Captain Commands. 
and that's it. So one of the things I considered was, yeah. So after this, I end up um, thinking about what to do. Uh, should I move? Should I try and move? My thinking was I can move to Eastern Emin Wheel and then move to Daggerlad and then at the beginning of next turn move into Mornon. The problem is they can wait for me to move into Daggerlad and attack me at that moment. Um, maybe I should have tried it anyway to see if they were going to make a mistake. If I move into Eastern Emin Wheel and they attack me in Eastern Emin Wheel, then I can use scouts into Daggerlad and win this turn in Mornon. But if they attack me into Dagger, if I move to Eastern Emin Wheel, then I then I move into Daggerlad and then they attack me once I'm in Daggerlad, I have to scout into like Ash Mountains or No Man No Man Lands or something like that. So this was a great defense. And I just, the single regular, you know, Faramir, I'm going to call him Faramir, even though I didn't get to play Faramir this game. Um, you know, he's doing his best, but there's just not that much that that single regular can do against this size of an army. If I had Gandalf there, and I also had a Hobbit there, then maybe I attack into it anyway and, and use Heroic Death, hoping to get some hits. And then round two, Sudden Strike. Um, but that is not what happened. Instead, what I end up doing is retreating Strider. And so I just, just in case anybody is wondering, I moved companions into Dead Marshes. Then I moved companions back to Westham Net. So, you know, that's not the most efficient use of dice. Um, had I gotten Rohan to war and then just built up some armies here and started moving around, I, um, I would have been able to had a more credible threat on the board. Um, again, this was a trick play. This was sort of a trick. If they don't have the card to can't counter it, then I, you know, I would have won. I mean, I really think that, you know, the chances of, well, who knows? I, I wouldn't, maybe I wouldn't have rolled a five or a six on two dice with the sudden strike. Um, you know, that's only, that's only, what is that? That's close to 50, 50. And then, and then maybe with a follow-up attack, they would have rolled a five or a six before I, yeah, you know, I would have had two dice and two leadership. So, um, it's possible they would have withstood that attack, but it, odds were good on that attack. And if that attack works, then I'm in to minus Morgul or Morinon. Um, so I went for that attack. They had the card to stop me. I don't think, um, yeah, that's what, that's, that's dumb with me. As, as I'm analyzing this more, there are a bunch of other cards that could stop me. Either of the two by two, the, the move two cards or the move three cards. Um, had they played them at this point? I'm going to look at discarded cards. I know you can't see this right now. Um, they had discarded Shadows Gather. I didn't know that at the time. So any of those cards, either of the bonus movement cards were as far, as far as I knew at that point available or this muster card. So yeah, that, that was too risky. I think it's admirable that I kept going for military victory, but I think the proper route here was, was get Rohan to war and let Rivendell go. That puts them at six, obviously not great, but yeah, the, the problem is I was just, I was just a little too slow because they're going to be able to get Woodland Realm. They're going to be able to get Helm's Deep if I run this army away. So I guess, I guess that's what I was thinking. I was thinking I have to hold Helm's Deep and, but even this is not going to work as I, as I look at it now, because they're going to be able to take Pilar gear. They're going to be able to take Dale and they're going to be able to take Woodland Realm. So that's, and that's the four they need in addition to Rivendell. So I'm guessing that's how it's going to go. I don't remember for sure. Okay, Fighting Urk High and um, Rivendell Falls. No surprise there. And I go ahead and play the Red Arrow at this point and get Rohan towards Ward. Dale Falls and Woodland Realm is not looking too happy. Um, my force pool of Elven units is just not that big. I mustered one into Lorien, two into Rivendell. 
and maybe three into Rivendell, and then one into Woodland Realm. All right, so it's not looking good for the free people. Um, and then I get this this horrible roll. Um, I can't even get Rohan to war. Um, so maybe with a different roll here, there might have been some hope, but there's really there's really no hope here. Um, Woodland Realm gets besieged. I don't know why you leave a unit behind. I don't think there's any need to do that. Nazgul move, and I go ahead and play. Oh right, I'm still I'm still fighting for. I don't know what. I mean, this isn't even. I don't even see what could happen here. Um, I guess my plan is after Pelargir gets retaken, play after Pelargir gets taken, then play Dead Men of Dunharrow and hope to roll a six. But Shadow can actually take Pelargir with their last action if they want. Um, because they have more dice than me. So I play I play um uh what, what was that? That was uh, Spirit of Mordor on this army in North Athelion thinking, okay, maybe I could destroy it. But it doesn't really matter, honestly. It doesn't actually do that much because even if that army goes away, I still can't get this unit from Dead Marshes anywhere important um, just with this with this roll. I guess I didn't really know what else to do. Um, but... Yeah, I guess I'm saving Athelos for for the for the combat effect. I don't know. This is this is just a tough situation. Okay, so Woodland Realm. Um, note that Day Without Dawn was played, but Woodland Realm is going to fall. I'm sure. Um, it doesn't. Uh, does it fall? Yes, it falls. Okay, so it falls this round, and I know that Pelargir is going to be the target. I move. Um, units from Edoras into Westamnet just to get ready. Why not? And then my opponent takes Pilar gear here. And that is a minor mistake because it's going to let me play Dead Men of Dunharrow, potentially get a bunch of hits. Um, so they miss Pilar gear. They're at 10. And then I go ahead and play Dead Men of Dunharrow here. Um, I did draw, I do have through a Dana Knight at this point. So you know, maybe some crazy things could happen with getting into Minus Morgul at the start of next round. Like, who knows? Um, all right, so I did roll a six. I did bring Gandalf. And they retreat to Osgiliath. And retreating to Osgiliath makes sense. Um, but it does allow me this path into, into Minus Morgul. So... Um, they muster one in minus Morgul, um, which I think makes sense. Um, and I play through a day and a night to near Harad because I guess my thinking is I will take Angmar and far Harad next round and shadow will roll very few attacks such that this army from Dol Amroth can come and retake Pilar gear. Seems very unlikely <laughs> for that to happen. It doesn't seem like I would be able to both take Far Harad and Angmar and also defend Pilar gear. But if you're trying to, you know, play to your outs and try and win, um, that's that's probably one of the more you know, possible, theoretically possible chances that I might have. All right, so they draw a strategy card, fine. And um, I get Faramir's Rangers here now, and they roll eight attacks. So, you know, that's game over. Um, and I get my Will of the West, so at least I'm going to, you know, move these people in I'm gonna that's gonna give me um you know four victory points but there's no way that you know I'm gonna be able to hold all of these things um 
yeah, there's just there's just no way. The, the game is over at this point. I mean, they can bring there there are a bunch of ways to do it. They can um, muster up an umbar and come attack Far Harad. They can um, retake Pilar Gear. It's going to be game over. All right. So they take Pilar Gear right away. That makes sense. And um, they bring armies over. Um, I move out of Dol Amroth because if they have, if they have, um, um, what is it? Uh, Corsairs of Umbar, then there's no way I'm going to, um, be able to hold everything anyway. So I just am basically taking more and more risks as the game situation gets dire, more and more dire, um, but I moved to Lamadon and then, um, yeah, I moved to Lamadon and then they reinforce armies. They just have a giant stack. I mean, there's no way that this army is going to be able to beat this army. It's at like one in 10,000, but you know, or one in a hundred thousand. I don't know what the odds are, but it seems extremely low odds. Um, I would like to be able to get, you know, Strider or, uh, Gandalf up there. But, um, because they do have heroic death, so that could help a bit. Um, and Gand I guess Gandalf can get there. So that's four movement from Gandalf. Um, I muster into Lamadon and then they get ready to retake Far Harad. And also they have Corsairs of Umbar. So they're at 12 victory points now and the game is over. But, um, the plan was to use a ring to get another elite in Lamadon, use... Um, bring Gandalf over to Lamadon and then attack into Pilar gear. So also this was funny. They played dreadful spells on Aragorn before attacking. They had a whole extra attack, but, um, they completely take out, they completely take out Aragorn. Um, so, you know, I think they, I think they played really well. Um, I think they played generously and that they let me do a take back that, um, you know, was, was upsetting. And, um, it led to what I think was a really interesting game. Kudos to them for, you know, just a really well-played game. Um, and I think it was, I think it was really interesting. I did actually have military chances throughout. I think it, it goes to show you, um, you know, do you go for the sort of opportunistic, moments where it seems like shadow might be leaving something open or do you really just build up a big stack of units and then go attack somewhere? Um, I think that, you know, I had, I had chances, uh, in, in round four when I was potentially taking more into a Golder, I had chances around turn nine, I think where Aragorn went and visited this, this, uh, lone regular in dead marshes, possibly getting into, um, Mordor and I had chances honestly on this very last round of the game when I was actually at four victory points and if shadow had rolled very few attacks um then you know I I, I certainly could have you know held had some chances to hold Pilar gear um or retake Pilar gear and um keep Farharad and Ingmar so great game really well played good sportsmanship uh, certainly on their part. And let me show you the statistics. So remember that um, these are reversed. They were, you know, pretty positive on their fives and sixes, um, but I was also positive on my sixes. Um, I was pretty low on army musters and wills of the West, which can be pretty important for military actions, but I did get Gandalf when I needed to. Um, yeah, they wow, plus seven on Palantirs. Yeah, so they were um we were both I was I was plus four on Palantirs, they were plus seven on Palantirs. So there were there was a lot of Palantir actions going on. I think they made really good use of it with the Witch King movements, the reinforcements, the Corsairs of Umbar at the end, dreadful spells, a lot of a lot of good things. So um great game. Thanks for the game. Looking forward to our next one.